Nestle this week acquired Freshly, the prepared meal delivery service, for $950 million. Is that a lot, Anne? Seems like a lot. That's quite a lot of money. Yes. Seems like a lot. Yeah, it's, it's not a B. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't Damn mind I wouldn't mind it, having that amount of money someday. I think yes. I'd round that up to sure. a B. I think if I was like the, if I was like the founder in a bar, I'd be like, yeah, just sold it for a B. Did you really? No, not really. But I'm gonna tell you. Until that. somebody right. throws exactly. a drink on you and they're like, uh, you should go sit with your own B. Right. That probably happened before corner. I even started. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> for background, founded in 2015, Freshly delivers a menu of fresh chef cooked meals to subscribing members across the United States that according to the company breaks down the dares, the barriers, the dairiers, the dairies, the barriers, the healthy eating by delivering nutrition and convenience at scale. I actually just spoke with this company about a month ago. Yeah, it's interesting. Like the whole model is fresh, prepared, great meals. But the key is you don't prepare them yourself. You literally just can throw them in the microwave and the, or the oven and they're ready to go. Kind of like the things you get at like the supermarket that are already prepared in that same manner. So here's my question for you guys, because I'm really curious, and I know Ann and I have debated this for months. Meal kits, fad or growing fixture of importance in American life following the pandemic? Where do you come down? Emma, we're going to start with you. I think it's going to be a growing fixture going on after oh. the pandemic. I will say, I had never heard of Freshly, and I think that these meal kits that you don't prepare for yourself, like that really confuses me and I really don't understand kind of this company, but the meal kits where you do, they send you the ingredients and whatnot, those I think are here to stay. I wish I had the amount of like disposable income to do that because it's painful when you like wanna cook something new, you have to follow the recipe. It takes you four hours longer than you thought it would and then you have to get all the new ingredients. I think it's definitely here to stay. And another interesting thing is all of the like lifestyle YouTubers that I follow, I think they all make their income off of doing ads for HelloFresh. Like they have gone <laughs> hardcore on the YouTubers. <laughs> like all of them advertise for HelloFresh. And I'm like, man, I really wish I could afford that. That's funny. That's funny. And what do you think? So Emma, bullish. That surprised me. I thought you were going to be negative on this one. This is why I love what we did. This is all spontaneous. And what do you think? Now, let me preface this by saying I am not the target customer. I am not a meal kit person. I am not a freshly person. This to me is, I think there will always, I'll, I will say, there will always be a space for this. I do not think it's a bad investment. I think that you're offering a bougie version of lean cuisine. And so there's always that. Which is probably why Nestle's buying this. For those that don't know, Nestle exactly. actually owns lean cuisine. They're probably scared, scared S-less right now. Um, but this is not inexpensive, you guys. Emma alluded to that earlier, but like, yes, this is a great benefit for people if you can afford the cost. I mean, even with Freshly's like middle of the road package, plus a $6 shipping fee every single time that you get it delivered and you have to be home for the delivery, which right now is not a problem for a lot of people, but going forward, I think is something to factor in. So you're looking, you're still looking at like, 10 11 dollars per person per meal and it's this small contained yes i know it's portion controlled but let's be honest like for a lot of people that you know to feel fulfilled after 11 dollars when you can go to chipotle and be like stuffed and have leftovers i don't i don't know i just i i think that this is going to continue to be a trend i think it's going to be big for a while while people are still at home but i think that once we all can go back out to restaurants and things are, you know, post pandemic world, I think there's going to be a surge in people wanting to go out and be at restaurants and I can get a decent meal at a restaurant for that much money. That's whatever I'm feeling like that day that I don't have to decide a week ahead of time that I want. And I think that if you take a family of four times that $10 per meal, $40 for a meal for a family, $40 in groceries could get you a lot at a grocery store that is not this that you could have leftovers for. So I'm not going to hundred percent. And no. God, I, God, I can't imagine because you spend so much time with me and the rest of my family. Like those are the exact same arguments that Mrs. Omni talk and grandma Omni talk dropped on us yesterday. So, or dropped on me yesterday too. I mean, here's what I, here's what I would say to you. I think you have to think about the meal occasion. Okay. So, all right. After this pandemic is over, is it going to be like Caligula, Caligula and everything opens up and we start eating out like crazy? Like, hell yes, for sure. 
but it's not going to be all we do because one, people can't afford it. And two, there's just going to be circumstances that don't allow that. Right. So there's going to be still the times we're eating at home. Now, when we eat at home, how will we do it? I think that's the big question. Right. And it, you're right. It's probably still cheaper and more economic, economic to still go out and buy groceries. But here's the other big factor, I think, which didn't get brought up in what you two said. I think the one thing this pandemic has shown, though, is that there are some benefits to working from home. And so in general, I think you're going to see more people working from home. And if you are working from home, and especially for lunch, which I think is what Freshly is really going after and why the Lean Cuisine comparison actually, quite frankly, is I think apropos, is you're not going to have the ability to go out for lunch like you would if you were typically working downtown or in a suburb or whatever. That's going to take you time. It's also like, relatively speaking, also on par expensive. And then as more people adopt this, the prices will come down to you. So I think there's some efficiencies, you know, that are gained by using these types of setups to feed your stuff if you are working from home. And so in mass, would I macroeconomically bet on the fact that that's going to happen? I would. And therefore, I think there's still more room to grow here and more adoption that you'll see from this. Um, the other thing I've tried it, I, you know, I've been using Blue Apron. I'm singing their praises. Like, I just love it. I'm learning how to cook for the first time. Um, it makes me more efficient in my life because I don't have to go to the grocery store. Everything's there. I don't waste as much either, which I think is interesting. Now there's the plastic and all that stuff, but like, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's here to stay, but Hey, been wrong before. And you get the last word. I just think that you can't make, you can, I, I agree with your, your, what are the trends coming out of this? Will more people be working from home? The lunch thing, fine. I, I agree with you. Like there is a value to having these. It's not a business that I would, that I'm not, I'm saying is not a viable one. There's definitely yeah, a, sure. a market for it. I just, I, I think you're a blue apron person because you're at home right now and your family's at home and you have I'm time sure. and your day's different. When you used to get home from work, when we were working back in the day at our old jobs and you'd get home from the yeah. office at six 30, the, I just, I don't see you whipping up the meal kits on, on a, I just, I don't know. I, I think you're right. But again, it's, and it's, that's actually what my parents, my family said too, but I was like, but, but Saturday and Sunday is different. Right. And I am working from home and like all that kind of stuff, you know, it, that factors into it, but you know, and you can't go out know. for a, a dinner. Like you guys have been using them a lot on the weekends, yeah. right, Chris, because you guys aren't, you yeah. know, you want to have a nice dinner. It is a lot of work out. to make a nice dinner to do that. So like, yeah, this makes sense right now for you because you're, you're substituting that Saturday nice. night date night with a blue apron meal date. I, I just don't know that you're going to keep doing that post pandemic. At least I sure hope not. Cause I really want to get out to the restaurants again yeah you're right it's a you know little nice nice cooked dinner a little bottle of wine a little movie i see what but you got you, on deck this weekend uh, yeah that's what we got planned this weekend and <laughs> what blue apron meal are you making weekend. this weekend 